there's no easy way to say this, so I'm just gonna put it out there. Most growers are rushing the propagation stage. That is the first few weeks of a plant's life and hurrying their plants into hydroponic systems. However, amigos, if you keep your cool and don't rush your plants to these key early stages, I promise that they will deliver far bigger yields further down the line. If you're growing hydroponically and haven't tried stone wool cubes and blocks yet, what's wrong with you? Just kidding. They're hard to beat, especially for the propagation stage. Stone wool is clean, consistent, easy to use, and ideal for creating homogeneous batches of healthy plants for all types of hydroponic techniques. Yes, you do have to pre-soak stone wool before use. The one-step approach is to use a mild vegetative hydroponic nutrient solution at around pH 5.5 to 5.8 and let the stone wool soak for between 1 and 15 minutes. The larger the block, the longer the soak time. Now some growers prefer a two-step approach. First they soak in a pH 5.5 water, then they perform a second soak in a mild nutrient solution. Now this two-step approach will arguably provide more pH stability in the stone wool as pure water will remove any residual lime more effectively. Be sure to allow the blocks a chance to fully drain before use. I like to to shake out some of the excess solution rather than squeezing it as it's too easy to compact the stone wool fibers and damage the micropores which the roots love so much. Now when growing like this always start seedlings and cuttings in a propagator. Once you see a root or a few pairs of true leaves it's time to wean them off the warm and humid environment inside the propagator and prepare them for the real world of your bedroom. We call this process hardening off. Open the vents in the lid then move on to leaving it at a slight angle to allow more airflow and to slowly reduce the relative humidity and temperature inside the propagator. After a few days the lid can be removed completely and the plants will have become more acclimated to their new environment. For young vegetative plants, I aim to keep daytime temperatures between 73 and 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 23 to 26 degrees Celsius for you sensible metric people. And lights on for 18 hours a day. Some growers choose a 24-hour cycle as it's easier to maintain consistent temperatures, but your plants will thank you for the short rest. The ideal relative humidity for juvenile plants is between 65 to 75 percent. This promotes a lower transpiration rate, which in turn will allow your young plants to concentrate their energy on root and leaf growth. Most growers use T5 fluorescent lighting or LED lighting at this stage, although an LEC 315 is also a great option. As far as irrigation is concerned, follow the 50% rule. Young plants are very sensitive to both overly wet and dry conditions. Don't robotically dip your cubes every day or leave them standing in water. Wait until they've dried out at least by half before re-dipping. Stone wool feels very light when it's dry and often looks lighter in color. If you take just one thing away from this, it's the importance of air pruning young plants. I'm not necessarily talking about fabric pots or specialist air pruning pots either. Air pruning is a really simple technique that stops root growth from extending beyond its growing media by exposing the roots to relatively dry air. When propagating with stone wool blocks, the plant's first primary roots will grow down through the block until the tips grow out the bottom. Once the primary root tips are exposed to the relatively dry air, they will stop growing and die back. I know how that sounds, but it's actually a good thing. As these primary roots now have nowhere else to grow, it stimulates an abundance of secondary roots to branch out from them, and these secondary Secondary roots will then spread through the block until they too get air pruned and stimulate yet more root branching. The overall effect of this growth and pruning cycle will create a plant with a well-developed root system throughout the entire block. Air pruned plants will literally explode with root growth when they are transplanted into their final hydroponic system. In practice, all that's involved with air pruning is setting your blocks up off the grow tray so that air can circulate beneath. GrowDan makes an awesome grow smart tray specifically for this purpose. It can accommodate both the AOK -OK starter plugs and larger blocks, but you can fashion something yourself by using a wire mesh or appropriating a rack from your oven. The key is getting air circulating beneath the blocks. This concentrates and contains the roots within the propagation media itself, forcing the roots to exploit every nook and cranny available to them. A lot of growers mistakenly believe that the first sign of roots out of the bottom of the block is their cue to move on to the next stage and actually that's the last thing you want to do. All this will do is produce plants with a few long roots coming through empty stone wool blocks. They'll also be more likely to be set back when planted as the lack of root mass within the block will not be able to cope with the frequent irrigations and large volume of water held by the block. Inevitably, this will cause the plant's health and growth rate to suffer through overwatering. This scenario is very common with growers using the nutrient film technique or NFT. Don't rush those plants into the NFT system. The A the aim of the game is to create a bunch of plants with an abundance of roots filling the internal structure of the stone wool blocks before planting them out. And this, amigos, is what air pruning is all about. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. This is Everest out.